This video is just a short extract from the entire course. If you wish to see all of the videos from this series at higher quality and in far larger screen size, head over to ifskills.com. In this lesson, we're going to look at drawing circles, ellipses, rectangles, and polygons. Now, all of these are available under the curve menu. You have rectangle, circle, polygons, but I'm going to be accessing them through the toolbar. So the first one we're going to look at is drawing circles, and that's this icon here. I'm just going to hold this down and drag the circle toolbar over to the workspace. Now the first icon is circle drawn from the center. So we'll just go ahead and click on this, and you can see the command line is asking us for the center of our circle. I type 0 and hit enter, and that applies the center of our circle at the center of our world coordinates. And remember, anytime you're drawing in one of the orthographic modes, if your drawing starts heading out of your workspace, you can always move your workspace around by panning, which is right mouse click, or using your scroll wheel to scroll in or out, using that as a magnifying glass. And if you don't have a scroll wheel, hold down your control key and right mouse click to move the cursor up and down to zoom in or out. Now we have the option of dragging or typing in a specific distance. For the first one, I'll just drag out and click. For the second one, I want to make sure it's in the center. For this new circle, I could type 0 to place the center of the circle right at our world coordinates, just as I did with the last one. But in this case, I'm going to switch our center snaps on and then click on circle. Then hover the cursor on the edge of this current circle, and you can see immediately I get a center snap. And I can start drawing. Or I can type a number, and in this case, you can see radius is bold in the command line. So any number I type will be the radius. If I want to switch that to diameter, I can just click on diameter. You can see that immediately changes. Now diameter is in bold, so any number I type, let's say a 5, is going to give me the diameter of the circle being 5 millimeters in this case. I can use any of my other snaps while I'm drawing this circle. So let me go ahead and click on the circle center radius again. And I have my end, mid, and this time I'll switch on my quad snap. And you can see as I move around, I can snap to the quad on this current circle or on this inner circle. And you will see an end snap showing up on a circle because every line does have to have a start and an ending. So there is an end on a circle, even though it's one continuous loop. So I'll just use this quad, click, and now my center is directly on the quad of that, and I can drag up. And also remember, if you're getting too many snaps, you can hold down Alt to disable snaps temporarily. And as I said before, I can just drag this as large as I want, or I can type a number. In this case, I'm going to switch back to radius, and I'll make the radius 5. Now the center radius circle that we have been drawing is the one you will use the most, but let's go ahead and delete these. And we'll look at a couple of other examples here. Let me go ahead and just draw a couple of lines on the screen. And here is our circle diameter. And what this one is, is you're drawing the actual start diameter of the circle. So I could click here for an end snap. And you can see as I'm dragging, the circle is actually moving from that beginning point out to anywhere else I snap to or I don't have to snap at all, or I can type a number that represents the diameter. Let me just go ahead and click and add that there. So now that's a circle whose diameter is as wide as this endpoint going to this midpoint. Let me delete that one. And then this is a circle from three points. So now I'm going to actually have a circle that encompasses three different points. So click once for that point, second time for this point, and another time for this point. So now I've drawn a circle who intersects at the three points I've prescribed. Go ahead and select that one and delete that one. And let's look at this icon here, which is circle tangent to three curves. So I have three curves, and I can just track off of any of these curves. As you can see, as I hold the cursor over a line, it switches to the smart track icon. And I can just click. Again, we have the smart track off of this line. And by the time we get to this one, because it has to be tangent to all three lines, 
You can see as I move the cursor, the curve itself doesn't actually move. And I have a circle that is tangent to all three of these lines. We also have the ability to very easily draw a circle along a line. Let me just switch to my perspective viewport by clicking this tab down here. I'll delete these pieces and I'll switch layer one on. I have a curve already drawn on layer one. As you can see, it's a complex curve moving in all three of our axis directions. So I'll go ahead and click the circle icon. You can see in the command line, we have an option for a round curve. If I click on this, the command line immediately asks me to select a curve, and that'll be a curve that you're using for tracking. So I want my new circle to appear somewhere on this curve. So I just click this curve. You can see as soon as I do that, it highlights, and now I have a cursor that is moving only along this curve. So I can use my snaps and click to quads or midpoints or any of the other options I have selected. Or if I want to disable my snaps by clicking here. Or I can just hold down the Alt key and move the cursor along this curve. And I can just click to place the center point. As you can see when I drag out, this new circle is perpendicular to that current place on the line. And I still have the option of just dragging a freeform curve or of typing, you can see currently radius is bold in the command line. So I could just type a number to represent the radius. In this case, I'll put a 10. And you can see that new circle is perpendicular to that line. I can apply that command again. Each time I do have to click around curve, select the curve, and we'll snap that down there. We'll make that a little smaller. Do another one around curve, select this curve. This time we'll pick it here. So you can see each time it's drawn a circle that is perpendicular to the line it's tracking from. Let me just select those curves and delete them. And we'll switch layer one back off. Click on the tab to go back to top view. And I'll close circle. Let's open up the ellipse menu which is this toolbar right here. As you can see, we have similar choices as we did to circle. I'll just click this. We'll be drawing the ellipse from the center. So I'll type five comma five to place the center at five units to the X and five units to the Y. This one's drawn a little bit differently than a circle since we have to define the radius or diameters of the axes of this ellipse. So I drag out as far as I want for the first axis. And then I can drag out as far as I want, or as short as I want, for the next axis. Go ahead and right mouse click to apply that command again. I do have my center snap on, so you see as I hover the cursor over the ellipse I've already drawn, it's giving me a center snap. So I can snap there knowing that I am now drawing from the center of this ellipse. And this time I won't just drag randomly, I'll type in numbers. So we're going to go 5 millimeters for the first axis. And the first axis can either be here, here, or if I let go of my shift key, it can actually be on an angle. Or we can type angle, and our angle snaps will work as well. So let's go ahead and put that at 45 degrees. And we'll go 12 for the second axis. And then click to apply. And as with the circle, I can also use intersections of objects. So go ahead and click this. Let me switch off center, switch on intersection. I can use the intersection of those two lines to form the center of my ellipse. Click once. This time I'll drag up for my first axis. And then drag to the left or type a number, say 5. Enter for my second axis. I'll go ahead and delete these, and I'll close this window. All right, let's go ahead and look at drawing rectangles. So to draw rectangles, we use the icon over here. Let me just hold this down, and we'll pull out the rectangle menu. So the first one is the corner-to-corner -corner rectangle. This is fairly self-explanatory. We'll click once, and it's asking for the first corner of the rectangle. I'll just go ahead and type 0 
Let's place it at our world center. Now it wants the other corner or length. I'll just go ahead and type a 5. And now you can see no matter how far to the right I pull my cursor, it's always constrained to 5 units. But I can move the cursor up or down to go positive or negative in the Y direction. And let me go ahead and enter in 20. You can hit the space bar to apply that again. This time I'll snap to the midpoint of the rectangle I just drew. Other corner or length, I'll type 10. And if I type 10 again, I get a nice perfect square. There's a rectangle from center. That's the second icon here. And when I click this, I'm drawing from the center of the rectangle. So I'll go ahead and snap to the square I just drew. And now it's asking for other corner or length. And I'll go ahead and type 10. So now you can see that's drawn another square that is 10 by 10 using the midpoint of the existing square as our reference. Go ahead and delete this one. I'll go ahead and draw another rectangle by its center. And this time I'll click center back on on my object snaps. If I hover the cursor over here, you can see the word center appears. I can just click. And now let's go ahead and type 5 and 5. So now I've drawn a 5 by 5 square that is perfectly in the center of this existing square. Anytime you're drawing a rectangle, I can click. So I'll start the first corner of this rectangle. As you can see the command line, it says rounded. I'll click rounded. And when I click for the second corner, it won't end the command. Now if I drag the cursor, you can see I'm starting to round the corners. And I can of course type in a number that I'd like to see for the radius, or I can just drag the cursor until it looks right. In this case, I'll go ahead and type in 8 for 8 millimeters, and that's drawn a rounded rectangle with 8 millimeter radius corners. You can also access the rounded rectangle through this icon here, or as you can see with the tooltip, if we right click, we can draw a rounded rectangle with conic corners. And let me show you the difference. So I'll right click this icon. Same sort of thing as before. I click once for the first corner, twice for the second corner, and I'll hold down Alt to temporarily disable my object snaps. This time when I click, you can see the rectangle is drawing a conic rectangle. So it doesn't have straight edges like the other rectangle does. And go ahead and just click there, and move that inside there so you can see the difference a little bit better. So whereas this rounded rectangle was straight on the sides with radiuses, this conic rectangle is all made up of arcs. Let me close this toolbar and select these objects and delete them. And the next thing we want to look at is drawing polygons. And that's these icons here on the toolbar. Let me hold this one down and pull this out. So the polygon icon that you'll mainly use is this one here. And although it's a hexagon in the icon, you can actually make it any number of sides that you wish. So I'll go ahead and click this. And we're drawing a center for a polygon. You can see at the moment it's set to number of sides equals 10. And I'll just go ahead and click for the center. And then I'll hold down my shift key and I'll drag it out just to give you an idea of what that looks like. I'll hit the space bar to apply the command again. And you can see we can get a center snap on that. I'll go ahead and click center. At any point I can change the number of sides. So I can come up here and click on this and type a number. Or as you see where it says num sides, the N is underlined. And that means I can type an N and then enter. And now it asks me for number of sides. I'll go ahead and put 5. And as you can see, it's drawing a five-sided shape. Go ahead and draw another one, again using the center snap. You can see I'm getting a lot of override here. The mid it wants to snap. So I'll just switch mid off for now. And now I can easily get to the center. I'm going to type N and enter and switch this to six-sided. Now notice as we're drawing these, it's actually drawing from the corner of these shapes. And we can change that. Let me go ahead and click this to enter that one. And we'll start 
the command again, I'll right click. And you can see in the command line, it's asking for the center of the inscribed polygon. And that means you're drawing with the corner points. If I click on circumscribed, now it says center of circumscribed polygon. Let me get another center snap. And now you can see as I'm drawing, my cursor is actually on the midpoint of this line rather than in the corner. And that can give you a little bit more control, especially if you're typing in dimensions and you need to fit a specific size. Switching to circumscribed can really be helpful for that. So as I said, you can type any number. If I wanted to go up to something crazy, I could type 40. Click for the center. And it's very hard to see, but there are 40 corners on this particular piece. If I explode it, you can see each one of those will give me a separate straight line. Go ahead and select these and delete them. And the last polygon shape we want to look at is this star shape. So we click on that. It has, also has a number of sides. Let me click on that and switch that to, let's say, 8. And it asks me to place the center of the star. And really what we're going to describe now in drawing this is going to be two diameters. The first is going to be the outside of the star. And I can click or type a number. And then I can drag the cursor for the second radius. Apply the command again. This time I'll switch this to, say, 16 sides. And let's make that 20. And then drag in. Make a nice sharp star like that. So you can see from these shapes, they'd be very time consuming to draw by hand. And it's very nice to have this tool that draws these star shapes for us very quickly, very easily. And that concludes our look at circles, ellipses, rectangles, and polygons.